most of the times uh, it is like uh, uh, practicing as many questions as possible because uh, if we look at it at a very broad scale it is nothing but some of the good practices that we follow as a part of the we need to follow as a part of a cfa profession as a part of uh, investment analysis so probably if we look at it on a very broad scale it appears as if uh, we know all these things right probably what is good to do what is not good to do but uh, uh, the kind of questions that are typically uh, framed are from the perspective that there could be minute glitches here and there in the options right uh, probably the question would come out as uh, in in this case i mean some some scenario would be given and finally says is this is this a violation against the code of ethics right so there is a very minute difference that is existing between option choice a b c so uh, to really understand whether it's a violation or not rather than trying to read each of the point in detail look at the examples that are given in the book right okay in this scenario this is a violation why read through it in that manner it gets i mean one you can read through the uh, small caselet with some interest okay this guy started act, i mean he has given some kind of a solution to the client the, so the client has actually uh, given him some kind of a gift Uh, as a recognition of his uh, solution now did this guy violate or did not uh, violate uh, the code of ethics so such kind of questions would be so probably if you look at that uh, example he even in the book uh, there could be some kind of an explanation for you saying this is not a violation because uh, it was initially treated as a part of the uh, as a part of the agreement itself that if the profits cross this much this has to be paid so i i would look at it as a compensation rather than any kind of an undue benefit gift so once you read through the various examples it comes out that okay in what cases should i treat this as a violation and in what cases it is not a violation right so here i would just cover uh, briefly uh, in the various uh, aspects which are uh, discussed and some of the core points but the major part of it lies in you reading through the various uh, examples that are highlighted itself so typically uh, some of the key things probably you don't uh, see anything uh, big in them the professional conduct is something which each one of us have to follow as a part of our uh, uh, as a part of our profession and uh, probably as a part of the taker of the exam also it starts right from this stage itself so these are the rules of the procedure relating to the professional conduct and uh, there is a disciplinary review committee of the cfa institute wherein it says the board of governors are the overall responsible not board of governors not of the company but the cfa institute the board of governors of the cfa institute have the overall responsibility for the professional conduct program so they can keep changing the standards and code of conduct they can even cross examine whosoever have uh, violated it and uh, they can even uh, get into an inquiry all these things for any kind of a violations they receive uh, that some x has violated some kind of a code of conduct so there could be i mean after proper uh, investigation it could uh, very well uh, the the, op- the the designated officer by the board of governors they can very well come out that a discipline no disciplinary action can be taken just like any other case somewhere in uh, bcci or some other uh, boards also we see similar kind of uh, things happening right either a disciplinary action will be taken or some kind of show cause notice will be uh, issued right so some kind of uh, cautionary or letter can come out or some kind of a disciplinary action which could which could go from a very low level of punishment to even revocating of your cfa designation and all these things also could typically uh, happen as a part of the code of a violation of the code of ethics so some of the things that are uh, being discussed here probably they look as if they are all uh, good manners good practices kind of thing 
right act with integrity competence diligence respect we all know these and in an ethical manner with the public with the clients and the prospective clients employers employees colleagues and all other people in the investment market and place the integrity of the profession and the interest of the clients above the personal interest we is i mean these are all ideological right saying okay for me work is more than uh, more than my personal interest of course this everyone knows so the, the examples that are typically uh, taken will have small deviations so that is what we need to identify with that most care and mark the appropriate answer sometimes the answers would be confusing and that's where the more and more you practice the examples that confusion will go up because theoretically we may find yeah all of them are looking much closer so but when you are uh, looking at uh, the the example in reality that is where you will see oh this is a violation because of these 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 reasons so use reasonable care and exercise independent professional judgment we'll talk about this when you are giving a judgment make sure that it is not a biased opinion of some of your colleagues sometimes uh, we are we are very much into the habit of copy pasting so probably someone else recommendation we may pose it as our recommendation even those things are a violation so make it and even independence also talks about from the dimension of don't get influenced in your uh, in your decision just because someone has paid you much more to give a to give a decision in his favor like okay if some company is not performing good but still you are compensated from the other company see someone said okay you give a buy rating on our company and we will uh, we will uh, give you this much right so probably uh, because of that you are changing your decision though this company is not a doing a good kind of a company you give your rating uh, saying yeah this company has an excellent future that means you are getting biased you are not making your decision independently you are biased with the kind of gift you are receiving from the other party so probably these are all like uh, uh, this is not a compensation this is not a challenge because otherwise you could have given a, a sell decision on the company shares but now you are giving a buy decision just because uh, you are getting a different compensation from the client these kind of things you have to avoid make sure that uh, you are taking reasonable care and exercise in making your decision independent even any analysis you are doing any recommendation you are making or making any one invest or pull out investments in anything all these have to be taken with reasonable care itself and it's also talking about make everyone practice in a professional and ethical manner every company talks about these kind of things as a part of their regular work practice itself but yeah now we are now that we are getting into a cfa cfa profession also talks from these dimensions itself so anything integrity of the capital market and all please maintain all those things professional competence make sure that you upgrade your skills regularly so that you can give better advice to the customers on a regular note from that dimension it is talking about the seven various aspects for us so the seven uh, major standards one is from a professionalism standpoint one is uh, maintaining the integrity of the capital markets then how do you, how do you behave your, with your clients how do you behave with your employers and what do you do as a part of uh, the investment analysis you are providing if at all there are some conflict of interest between your party a and party b how do you try to get into those kind of conflicts and finally relating to the exam and uh, cfa membership and all those things the responsibilities from that dimension so coming to the professionalism it has identified a few aspects like it's better that you know the law again law from the perspective of especially uh, associated with the investments part majorly uh, relating uh, to regulatory bodies any licensing agencies that are there especially relating to your profession some law relating to sebi rules some laws relating to any other if you are getting into investment uh, insurance kind of investment what is the irds 
uh, act and all talk about or how does uh, so wherever whatever are linked to your investment decisions mutual funds what are the acts related